Welcome back. It's day 27. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that the second mover shoot system has finally righted itself and busted out of the soil after being buried for five days. It took five days to right a ship that was wronged in one in the previous episode. After I removed the seed coat and mistakenly put it upside down, thinking the storage organs were cotyledons and that the shoot system was a root system, it curved the wrong way in less than 24 hours, and this is what happened. If you compare that to the first mover stock, it's a huge contrast. The second mover is green and healthy looking, much thicker. The first mover is yellow. Its end resembles the burnt end of a spent incense stick, and it's shorter. The apical marrow stem is dead. I can try to amputate and let the base of the stalk photosynthesize for a while and see if that can regenerate a shoot apical marrow stem but it might not have the resources to do so or it could take a very very long time so functionally that's a loss I could try to amputate but for the time being I'm hoping that that 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide I squirted on everything will keep the mold at bay videography is not great uh, through the glass the sun just came out as you can see, the second mover shoot has a apical marrow stem that's greener in the middle and two sets of leaves possibly coming out of the sides. It's day 28. There's a lot of mold growing out of the firstborn's rotting shoot system. It definitely confirms that it's a goner. It's day 30. Let's have a look. The weather has been gloomy lately with some intermittent rains. It's like this typically in May in San Diego. So as you can see, the rotting stalk of the firstborn looks like the end of a dandelion with seeds all over, except they're not seeds, they're mold spores that have probably been dispersed throughout the entire container. I'm squirting on some 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. I don't really know what that's going to do. Probably not much at this point, since I have a rotting mass. It's day 31. Time to put the firstborn on the chopping block. It's not working out but I'm still holding out hope that if I surgically remove the rotting end of the stalk or what's left of it, the bottom, which is still green, can photosynthesize and over time maybe even generate a new shoot apical marrow stem and start growing. Granted, even if that happens in the best case scenario, its growth will be delayed so much compared to the second borns that it'll almost be like watching two different plant growing series. Alright, well here goes. I'm going to chop off the top half, or more than that, probably the top 65% to 60%. That gets rid of the rot. The you know, cross section looks healthy. I'm squirting on some hydrogen peroxide to disinfect after the so-called surgery. So everything looks good for the second born. And it looks to be well on its way to becoming a sapling. At this point, it's just a tiny, tiny seedling. It looks really healthy. Um, this is not what I expected. You know, it's just proportionally a fat green stalk with leaves that are very, very small. All right, it's day 32. It's sunny again. My favorite conditions for filming things outdoors. And as you can see, there's more development in the second born. The stalk or the stump of the firstborn looks like a goner. It's yellower than ever. The cross section is just this pale white. I don't think it's infected with mold anymore. It's just in stasis. It's not going to grow anymore. It's effectively dead. When I do a inevitable transplant, I'm probably going to fish the root system of that out and see what it looks like. For the time being, I'm just enjoying this lush green growth of the second born. There is no point in further denial. I made a mistake in episode one and lost one of the two seedlings. I'm now down to the second born, which looks to be very healthy and will hopefully lead me to a long lived and fruitful series. The stalk of the second born is straighter now. It's still got that kink in it, but that could straighten out over time. And it looks to be very, very healthy with more leaf definition as everything gets bigger. I'm hoping that over the next few days 
you know, I'll see significant accelerated growth. I'm watering a little bit with some more hydrogen peroxide. All right, it's day 34. So there's been a significant amount of progress, although everything is still very small. I'm watering once again. A small cup of soil dries out very fast in the midday sun. Actually, I wouldn't say midday. This gets more like afternoon sun, late afternoon sun. Oftentimes, the sun doesn't hit this directly until perhaps closer to 3 p.m. every day. And that lasts until maybe 7 p.m. So I had a fortunate incident. I was eating some more navel oranges, and I discovered a very large seed in one of them. So I incubated on the TV set-top box for one whole day. Not very long at all. I just wanted to keep it hydrated because I heard if orange seeds get desiccated, they rapidly lose viability. So I'm trying to hold on to this slimy thing with gloves. It's got that slimy gel layer all around the outside. I'm using these sharp, um, maybe these are like nail trimming scissors, although I never use them for that purpose. I just use them for cutting very fine objects such as this. So this thing kept slipping in orientation. It was much bigger and fatter than the two seeds I started with, which bodes really well for accelerated development compared to the other two. And this is such a good thing because I lost one seed, as you know. So I'll at least have two mini orange seedlings going forward. So I finally managed to cut a little bit of that off. And then the job was to use my fingernails through the gloves to rip off the seed coat, as I had done before. But in that case, you know, the hole had opened naturally and split along the seam where it's weaker inside, where the seed coat is thinner, where it's naturally predisposition to split. Doing this with gloves is a whole other beast. It's very difficult. I was fumbling around for a really long time. I'm sure if I had to do 10 or 20 of these in the beginning, I would be a lot more experienced. But as you can see, I'm making some progress. I'm peeling off the seed coat. It's actually not anything like a sunflower seed coat. It's not dry, hard, and stiff. It's more pliable perhaps because there was so much moisture in there to begin with, and it rips off in strips. It's neither fibrous nor brittle. As you can see, it comes off in strips that you just peel away one by one, and you have to do this several times while dealing with that slimy layer of gel, which is being reduced as you peel it away. The seed itself inside, whether it's the embryo or whatever I'm touching on the inside at this point, is itself very slippery and smooth so it's sort of a wet slippery not really a waxy slippery and I'm almost done here it just requires one last little bit of effort while being very gentle not to crush the embryo and damage any of the parts inside it's starting to resemble a kernel of unpopped corn which I didn't really expect I thought there would be you know some white some green in there and it'd be ready to go and expand maybe some kind of membrane between the seed coat and the, the embryo the cotyledons or whatever's in there and that would just get torn away as the seed soaks up water and starts expanding so that's what it looks like on the inside on the pointy tip there's a beige mass of something waxy that could potentially expand and grow to become a root or shoot and the whole thing on this pole looks like an unpopped kernel of corn on the other pole you have what looks to be the top of an acorn with uh, somewhat of a pointy hook so one pole does something and the other pole does the other obviously or maybe it's not the case and then you have all the torn fingernail looking of fragments of the seed coat. There's six of them that I peeled off. This is the pair of sharp scissors that I used. Can't imagine that people actually use these to cut their fingernails. I've been reserving this pot for a new plant growing series. I'm going to use it for my navel oranges. First thing I'm going to do is transplant the seed that I just peeled the seed coat off of. I'll call it the third born 
in a position that's off center but close to the watering hole and the watering tray down there this is a bottom watering pot I don't really do that much bottom watering these days but it is a convenient feature to prevent things from spilling out if you overwater from the top I was just ripping up a chunk of peat moss there it's got all sorts of things uh, perlite vermiculite wood chips peat moss uh, potting mix is very versatile it becomes really really dry here in Southern California if you just let it bake on the balcony under the sun for a few hours a day and you don't use it and you never water it so this likely hasn't been watered for a few months and it's bone dry it's not really reacting with the water and it's annoying because things kind of shift around it's got particles that are lighter than water so when you start doing this everything just floats around and you're worried if the seed will shift in orientation or float to the top this beautiful red watering can I got has a capacity of slightly less than a liter it says a quart and that should be maybe 900 mls each time I fill it I like to use distilled water to avoid an accumulation of minerals that would increase the salinity of the soil over time that you would get if you use tap water I'm going to go in and get another can so that'll be close to two liters of distilled water at the end I'll squirt on some 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide at the site of the seed to keep it uh, mold free or relatively mold free so I expect to see results in maybe two weeks for this third mover you know, the third born and I'll do a transplant with my second born as soon as it's big enough to handle an operation like that so we're off to a pretty good start we just have to wait a few days and let things be to see what happens all right it's day 41 I really wanted to make an update earlier than this since there's been some progress but the sky's been like this the entire time it's been more than a week of May gray as they call it typically people only know about June gloom in Southern California along the coast like this but there's uh, no sky July and August for instance so here's uh, my Lux meter it registers 2000 plus Lux up there there's actually less light down there because the two flanking pots block a lot of the light from the sides so up here with the Joshua tree you get 4000 Lux so not a whole lot uh, definitely the plants progress has been slowed down by all these cloudy days because it's getting maybe 1 30th or even less of the light it needs compared to a sunny day on day 43 I was very happy to see that the weather reports held true to their promise of Sun we had several hours of partial Sun throughout the day but the big puffy cumulus clouds closed in around dusk this was past 6 p.m. so it was a uh, low light filming once again you can see the butter knife like leaves from the profile sort of look like Venus flytrap mouths from the top so that's very interesting that the edges of these leaves are serrated I don't know if they'll look like that when they're bigger you can see somewhat of a cobweb strand between one of those initial two leaves on the bottom very small ones I don't know if that's because there's a spider in there um, I would have seen any activity of a spider mite having filmed this using highly detailed macro footage every day the sides of the trunk are sort of brownish or slightly scarred that just might be damage physical damage from sprouting upwards through all this debris so there's obvious growth over the last two days and compared to the previous weeks but it's very slow due to the low amount of light this receives every day I have just the perfect amount of moisture and I've sealed it with plastic wrap if any of you still haven't done so please subscribe to my youtube channel like my videos comment below I have everything organized into playlists I have a growing library of plant growing series that will hopefully continue far into the future so stay tuned for episode 3